Hello and good evening, everyone. I'm Ms. Aisha Siddiqui and I'm back for another lecture with you all. I'm glad and honored to talk to every one of you. It has been a few weeks or a few days where I have uh, taken a gap in the middle uh, to make the video. And after a few days of gap, I am back here for the uh, video as I was busy in a few family functions and Yes, and there is a lot of things going on now. Diwali is coming, so there'll be a lot of functions in Diwali and a lot of family gatherings and Diwali can be celebrated on a large scale as well. But it is a kind and humble request from me that do not celebrate uh, Diwali or any other functions on a large scale wherein you are uh, in the fold of breaking the safety rules that are set by the government uh, for the virus. And you can celebrate it in your house. You can dress up in the best possible way for yourself, for your family members and celebrate it in your house where you can take care all of all the safety rules and you and your family can be safe. So it is a humble request uh, to consider this and do not celebrate it where uh, it will harm you. So there are many ways to celebrate at, at home, right, with family and friends. So it is a kind request. And as um, the, everything has gone back to normal, if you can, everyone must be knowing, right, that uh, if you go out, everything is normal. You will not even realize that the virus has taken place. But it, it is a signal of something worst is coming as the latest thing that I saw on news was uh, the virus's second phase is going to come and it is going to hit more harder and it is going to be more worse than the previous one i have heard uh, countries like france has announced um, uh, one week or a, or a week or a two of lockdown in their country even germany is leading to a two week of lockdown italy and other countries are doing the same so maybe our country that is india will also take the step to start with the second phase of virus and this time it is going to be more deadlier as even history uh, states that the Spanish flu that was taking place few, not few, many years back had a second phase wherein the virus was getting over and uh, it was just uh, just finishing and people thought that everything is normal and they had started living a normal life. It got, uh, the people got hit by the virus more harder for the second, in the second phase. So it is a kind request to everyone that do not take it very lightly. I have seen people outside. Uh, everyone is thinking that the virus has completely vanished and nobody is wearing masks, nobody is taking any precautions. Uh, yeah, people are wearing the mask, but few of them uh, are not taking it so seriously, not very seriously. And I've got a few people saying, virus to chala gaya, ab kya karna hai? Let's celebrate let's do this and no social distancing no wearing masks no precautions no sanitizers no why why this is happening we can all wear uh, masks what is uh, such a big deal in it right it is also protecting you from the dust it is also protecting you from all the particles that may uh, spoil your skin or maybe um, your breathing or your yeah respiration and all so it is a good thing, even though the virus is not there, you can wear it to protect yourself, right? And even sanitizers, it is a hygiene that we are following. So uh, we should take all these precautions. Even the virus, if it is completely gone later on, if it completely goes away, and still we should uh, keep continuing these good habits that we have learned from the virus. So always, even though a thing is bad in our life, even the situation that is bad in our life teaches us good lessons. So we should forget the bad situation from our life and we should grab everything that is useful and the lessons that we've learned from that time. So we should remember the lessons learned, but we should leave the bad memories behind, right? So we should leave the virus, what all it did to us, 
and how hard and bad the situations have uh, become. But we should keep in mind and uh, learn the lesson that we have to keep our hygiene. We have to uh, wear our mask, keep ourselves clean, keep our, our surrounding clean so that we do not fall into uh, the category where uh, we may fall sick and ill. And it is not a very good idea of falling sick at this moment and also uh, the second phase that is going to come it's going to be very hard right so because in the first situation where the virus had come we were not ready we we did not know what the virus is about we did not know how to protect ourselves and we were just discovering all these things so we were not prepared how what to do but in the second phase we all are prepared we already know what the virus is so when we know our enemy we can hit it more hard if we know the weakness of our enemy we can catch that point and um, win right so if we want to win and uh, do not let the virus be more uh, on the larger scale than us. Uh, so we should have take all the precautions and we should not forget that human mind is greater than everything. God has made human and human mind greater than all the technology and machines. So if we keep in mind what is our safety and we are already prepared so first time we were not prepared but this time we should be well prepared for the second phase so only the people who are intelligent will be prepared for the second phase and the people who are um, not aware of what is happening around will again be hit that hard how it was hit before so it is a kind request to go back and uh, do not forget the safety rules. Do not forget the rules that the government has set. So moving forward, uh, a lot of news and everything is done. Let's move forward to the topic that we have to do today. Is um, We are going to do a topic of grammar today from English literature and a very unique topic, a very uh, basic topic, but people need to know uh, the small mistakes that we me, including me, we make mistakes when we speak or sometimes when we write. To correct the mistakes, we should know what can, what the topic is or what uh, what are we going to do today. So let's start. The topic is conjunctions. I hope you all must have uh, heard it or we must have done it in school, right? But whatever we've done in school, mostly we tend to forget what it is. So let's go back and brush up a little with it. So I'm sharing my screen here. So yeah, the topic is conjunctions. Let's see what it is. So here I have just prepared a small video for you. I mean, a small poem uh, by Elizabeth Stinglass. So she is the one who has written that poem. And I really like it. It is on based on conjunctions. Some people like words, like firefly or shimmer. Words that sing a melody. But my favorite word is and, and doesn't sing, and doesn't paint, and looks lost on a line by itself. But, and reminds me, but, and reminds me, I can be both happy and sad. I cannot like something and like it too. I don't always have to choose. So I hope you like this uh, poem and it actually shows the use of and 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 is a conjunction and is the main kind of conjunction. So it shows that I can like something and I can like something else as well. It not, it's not necessary that we always need to choose that I just want this or I like this. No, you can like this and that. So you can like to be simple at times, to be very simply dressed or sometimes you can be overly dressed. It depends on you, right? And nobody is going to judge you. And if uh, everyone judges you though, you should not care about them, right? You should uh, do whatever feels good. 
So it doesn't matter if uh, you like this or you like that. See, oh, another type of conjunction. So, um, and the use of and is shown in this poem. I would like to read this poem again uh, very fast. But so some people like words like firefly or shimmer. Words that sing the melody. But my favorite word is and. And doesn't sing and doesn't paint. And looks lost on line by itself. But and reminds me I can do both. Happy and sad. I cannot like something and I can like it too. I don't always have to choose. So it shows you can do both the things. And okay, now let's come back to the topic of conjunctions and see first what it is. It, it, uh, the word conjunction has coined from a Latin word that is conjurer, together. That means to join together. Conjunctions are words that link other words phrases, clauses, sentences like peanut butter and jelly. So you can say, I like peanut butter and jelly. So you do not need to always choose as the poem has said. So you can like, like two things at a time. Uh, you can like action movies as well as drama. You can like uh, apple as well as mango. I, I imagine everyone like apple and mango together. So what is the key concept here? Linker or join words. The main purpose is that we are joining the words and sentences together. Okay, leave the second. Avoiding the text seems like bullet point and to make the text flow. So conjunctions actually makes the sentence flow and you do not need to break a sentence and again say another sentence. So it, it makes the sentence continue. Now, what are the types of conjunctions? The types of conjunction, the first type of conjunction is coordinating conjunction, subordinating conjunction, correlative conjunction, conjunctive adverbs. Now, this also comes into another category of adverbs. So, we'll see if we will cover up that or not. So, the first three, yes, definitely we'll be doing that. Okay. Coordinating conjunctions. One type of conjunction is the coordinating conjunction which gives equal importance to words or sentences that it connects. So it doesn't matter if it's a big sentence or a small word. It gives equal importance to both the type of, both the sides means the first sentence and the main clause. Both are given equal importance. There are seven coordinating conjunctions. So there's a list here. But or so yet for nor so it's like a, a, a small poem right but also yet for nor so you can learn it that way fanboys or you can say uh, but also yet for nor but or for but also yet and yet for nor so it is a tongue twister actually so sometimes you can play the game of tongue twisting here it happens uh, I like coffee, but my wife prefers tea. But, but is the conjunction here where both the sentences are given equal importance. He likes coffee, that is given importance. And the wife prefers tea, even she is given importance. So it's not like, uh, I do not like this or I do not like that. Both are considered. Would you prefer coffee or tea? So if you like coffee, I can give you coffee. If you like tea, I can give you tea. So again, both the words are given equal importance, coordinating. They both are coordinating together. I've drunk six cups of coffee today. My, that's not good. So I've got a headache. Of course, you'll get a headache. If you drink six cups of coffee, anybody will get a headache. I think people can have more, more, more uh, side effects because of it. So I've drunk six cups of coffee today, so I've got a headache. So both the sides of the sentence have equal importance that he's drunk so much of coffee and that is the reason he's got a headache. So both are given equal importance. Let's see a few more examples of coordinating conjunctions. I take milk and sugar in my tea. Milk and sugar, both in the tea. Of course, milk, sugar, tea, uh, tea is made out of it. So I take milk and and is the conjunction 
and both the things are important here. So both the uh, sides of the sentences have given equal importance. So milk and sugar both are given importance. He is 72, yet he still swims. Wow. Runs and plays football regularly. That is superb, right? Even though he's 72, I think everyone should aim for that. Keep yourself as fit as you can so that even though you all become 70s and in your 80s, you can be active. So if you start living a lifestyle that is healthy, so yes, you might be so active when you're in your 70s and 80s, if you are living. So here it is showing that he is 72. That is very important. And the other part is also important. Yet is the conjunction here. So the yet is given so much of information of he's doing something ahead. What all he's doing? He's swimming, runs, plays, football. All the three activities. So this side and that side of the sentence both are given equal importance. She must have been very hungry, but she ate everything immediately. Or she ate everything immediately. So sorry, the word, the conjunction is for. Now, they are showing that she was hungry and that was the reason she started eating everything immediately. So that is a connecting word in the middle. Both the sentences have given equal importance. Switzerland is not the European Union, nor is it a member of the NATO. So nor, so both the things are given equal importance, the union and NATO. So they're showing Switzerland is neither of them. So nor is the conjunction which gives both the sentences equal importance. Now, here they are showing why coordinating conjunctions, what are the functions of coordinating conjunctions? Let's see the first one. So, so for showing the consequences of something, he was very hungry, so he ate all the cake. So is actually given so much of importance. But is for contrast. Whenever you're using contrast ideas, contrast means something that you have said and you immediately want to use just the opposite. That if, uh, if for example, I say, uh, I like the color black, but I like white too. So, but. So, just the opposite. Black and white, they're just opposites, right? So, whenever there are contrasting ideas used, you can use the word but in the middle. I eat cake. But I never eat biscuits. So he's eating cake and he never eats biscuits as well. So they're showing contrasting ideas. I don't like them. Okay, for. For explains why. Why means more formal and less common than because. So it is not as common as because. Mostly we use the word because for our sentences, right? Uh, for example, uh, the same example that's on the slide, he's overweight because he eats too many cakes and biscuits, right? He's overweight because. We normally use the word because, but if we're using the word for, it is a British, uh, if we mostly use in a sentence the word for instead of because, we are mostly saying the British English uh, way of speaking. Even because is used in it, but in a more formal way, you can use for. So he's overweight for he eats too many cakes and biscuits. So you can also use for over here. Now, what do you mean by and? The same, similar, or equal without contrast. Now, whenever there's a like contrast, we just spoke about it, we can use but. But when we are saying some similar things that I like uh, blue, and black and green and yellow and 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 you can just keep on adding so equal colors we're talking about colors right so similar equal things are been said in a line so you can keep on repeating and 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 so not the contrasting ones if you want to say contrasting you can use the word but his favorite snacks and uh sorry his favorite snacks are cakes and both the things he like and that's the reason we are saying and over here let's move forward examples let's see a few more examples here for two non-contrasting grammatical negative items not not if there are 
two negative items. That means if you want to say I do not like black and neither or nor uh, white. Right? If you want to say both the sentences in negative form, means you do not like this and you do not like that. Both the things you do not like. So in this case, you can use more of the word nor. Nor. He doesn't eat cake, nor he eats biscuits. So in this case, you can use the word nor. Let's see the other one. Or. Now, before an alternative. What do you mean by an alternative? Would you like cake or biscuits with your coffee? Now, or is used for an alternative. That means you're given uh, uh, options for them. So you want tea or coffee. You want this or that. If you're giving options, ye bhi or wo bhi. So I have both the things what you want. So you're given an option, right? Uh, and this place, whenever you're giving options, you can use the word or. Let's go to the other one. Yet. Contrast despite something. Synonyms, nevertheless, but still. Now, what do you mean by this? Contrast despite something. He is overweight and feels terrible. Yet he continues to eat a lot of cakes and biscuits. What do you mean by this? So you are using contrast things. You are saying contrast, but something is similar. So he was saying he is overweight and he feels terrible. Sometimes it happens, right? Uh, we are understanding that we are putting on weight, but we do not do anything out for that, right? We we should act. We should immediately act once we feel that oh my skin is getting a little bit uh, bad or something wrong is happening. You should immediately feel that it is happening, and you should do something good out of it. You should not leave it. Or if you are putting on weight, and you can feel that you are putting on weight, so please, everyone out there, uh, do something. Get up, go for a jog, uh, do some activities uh, that might make you feel good as well as you can lose weight so some people what they do oh let's eat more and more and more and you are uh, fat then you become obese so instead of that instead of becoming more bad you can become a little more good so he's overweight but still he can but still he continues to eat lots of cakes and biscuits Okay, now what is subordinating conjunctions? A subordinate clause cannot stand alone as a sentence. So a subordinate, it is a weak conjunction. You can always remember it as a weak conjunction. Subordinate conjunction connects to an independent clause. So you can say as a creeper plant, or not a creeper, sorry. Uh, you know, you must have heard of a very common saying, common uh, plant that we say as a money plant. So climbers that you can say. So climber plants are the type of plants that need support. So they cannot stand uh, or they cannot grow straight on their own. So they start on falling here and they start on falling there. So they are, the stem is not that strong. So they start taking the support of some strong tree with a fat stem and they start growing on it like that, like that and they keep on going it up. Or if you keep it in your house, you will see how beautiful it looks when it starts covering. If you can see, if I keep a, a, a money plant here, it will actually start going here, here and all over because it needs support. So it starts climbing somewhere or the other with the support. So it actually goes like that around if you keep it near your window. So similarly, subordinating conjunctions are like that. Subordinating, subordinating conjunction, you can just imagine like a climber and it depends on an independent clause. She's crying because you were unkind. So she's crying. You cannot just finish it off there. She's crying. You'll say, why? Why is she crying? So it is incomplete, right? So you need uh, to finish the sentence by saying because you are unkind. Let's move forward for more examples here. Common co subordinating conjunctions include because, so that, as, since, to express the reason. Now, for subordinating conjunctions, you always need to express a reason. So it is always incomplete because it is weak. I already told you like a climber. 
So it is always incomplete. So you can say, she's ready. So you'll say, for what? For a wedding, to attend a wedding. Uh, or you can say, she's ready. For what? As she has to attend a wedding. As. So you saw that? You, you are connecting the both the sentences with as. Or some more examples, before, after, until, when, as soon as, whenever, while, a lot of examples are there. Unless, even if, in case, to express, okay, I, I just forgot to go. I just went a little faster. Let's go behind. Before, after, until, till, when, as soon as, while, or whenever. These all things are used to express. For example, uh, I'll be back. So you will say, when? As soon as I finish my homework. Right? So as soon as is actually. So I'll be back. So it's incomplete. The subordinate clause is actually incomplete. How are you putting a subordinate conjunction in? As soon as. That shows that whenever you finish your homework, you'll be back. Right? So as soon as I finish my homework. That expresses time. Let's go ahead. Unless if, even if, in case, providing. This shows condition. Condition. I'll not come home or I'll not come out to, sorry, I used the bad example. I'll not come out uh, for a movie or I'll not come out for dinner unless I finish my homework. Unless. That's a condition. If I finish the homework, only then I'll go out for a dinner. Otherwise, I'm not going to go. So, unless is showing a condition. Or even uh, you can use other examples here. Uh, I've just given an example that uh, I'll not go for dinner unless I finish my homework. A condition is there. Now, let's go ahead. Although, even though, whereas. To express contrast or concession. To just show the opposite. Uh, I just said black and white, right? So, if I want to say uh, I like I like Paris, whereas I like Rome as well. Right? You can use those contrasting ideas. Or I like black, whereas I like white also. So this is a subordinating conjunction that is used to join uh, an incomplete sentence to a complete sentence. Okay, this is whenever you're watching my video, you all can go through this to see and practice subordinating conjunctions. These are a few examples. These are all examples of subordinate conjunctions. You all can go through this. Let's go to the other one. Correlative conjunction. Correlative conjunctions are pairs such as neither nor, not only, and but also. These conjunctions connect to balanced Clauses, phrases or words. So both are balanced. Even the first sentence and the other sentence is balanced. But we are using a pair of conjunctions. Neither nor, not also, but also. These are pairs. The two elements that correlate, uh, that correlative conjunctions connect are usually similar in length and grammatically structured. Okay, either or, like these words. We cannot go to either way. Or Kangha Naran for a holiday. It's my final offer. You can either take it or leave it. You can see here, pairs are used. Either or, either or in both the sentences. So, I can go to Mumbai or to, uh, I can go either to Mumbai or to Bangalore. Right? Either or. You can use many uh, Relative pairs here. That's why it's written co-relatives. That means similar uh, pairs are used. Okay, here. Both and. Let's see the examples of both and. Both cricket and football are pop popular. Both English and Urdu are spoken. Not only but also. Not only is he a professional footballer, but he's also a successful businessman. So he's both. It's a very tough thing to be good uh, and professional at two things, right? So not only, but also pairs are used. That is why it's known as correlative. Not and but. In sport, what counts is not the winning, but taking part. 
and it is true very true even though you are losing no problem you are participating that is the main thing okay these are few more examples neither or nor so neither norway nor switzerland is in the european union marriage is neither heaven nor hell it is simply oh god i do not want to use this abraham lincoln's um, statement very nice okay whether or whether you love them or hate them you have to admit that the rolling stones are very popular even though you love it or you hate it whenever or so these are a few examples of correlative pairs that we use as conjunction no sooner than no sooner i had finished watering the garden than i started than it started raining so i just finished and it started raining now conjunctive adverbs okay uh, i do not want uh, to do this with you all so let's finish with uh, the conjunctions i have already done the three types of conjunctions and they are coordinating subordinating and correlative i hope you all understood this and you all can use it whenever you all speak all these pairs and it will enhance the way you speak and conjunctions pretty it's very easy and very useful when you all talk or write uh, i have also put down another poem in the end Uh, on conjunctions let's read it how things are done the adverbs tell as slowly quickly ill or well a preposition stands before a noun as in or at the door conjunctions join the words together as men and children win all weather the interjunctions shows surprise as of how pretty ah how wise thank you so much everyone i hope you'll enjoy the poem it actually showed so many grammatical um topics adverbs were used in the poem preposition conjunctions interjunctions interjunctions and oh, these words were used uh, in the poem wherein conjunctions actually showed that it is used to join words junction so i hope you'll enjoy the video and liked it keep watching it and try to gain knowledge from each and everything that i'm preparing thank you so much take care of yourself wear your mask take all precautions and take a very good care of yourself